Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. May the babe of Bethlehem bless us all as we and the whole world rejoice at his birth. The Midnight Liturgy of Christmas meditates on the great mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God, especially through the Word of God read in it. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 14, we hear the narration of the birth of Jesus. In the first reading, Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 to 4 and 6 to 7, the prophet announces the birth of a royal child on whose shoulders will be the authority. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Isaiah speaks of the joy that will usher him with his birth. For the people walking in darkness will see a great light. Their joy will be increased as people rejoice at the time of harvest. Obviously, Isaiah is announcing the birth of the Messiah. In the second reading, the Apostle Paul, writing to his son or disciple Titus, chapter 2 verses 11 to 14, is reflecting on what has happened at the incarnation of the Son of God. He says God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race. The very narration of the birth of Jesus also points to the mystery of what has happened. For an angel gives an interpretation of the fact to the shepherds who were keeping watch over their flock at night in the vicinity of the birthplace. The song of the heavenly host too interprets this fact of utmost importance. Interestingly, in the Mass of December 24th morning, we read as the Gospel passage, Luke chapter 1 verses 67 to 79, which is the song of the priest Zechariah at the birth of his son John, who would later become the Baptist and the forerunner of the Messiah, Jesus. This song, known as Benedictus and sung every day in the morning prayer of the church, has beautiful insights into the mystery of incarnation, which I think could be connected to our reflection about Christmas. Zechariah sings, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of David his servant, as he promised by the lips of holy men, those who were his prophets from of old. Luke chapter 1 verses 68 to 70. It's indeed strange that although Zechariah is singing at the birth of his son John, the focus of the song is the birth that of Mary's son Jesus. For he says that God has visited his people and has raised up a mighty savior in the house of David. Indeed, John the Baptist, born to the priest Zechariah, was not of the house of David. He belonged to the priestly tribe. David was not a priestly descendant. He was of the tribe of Judah. And hence the one born in the house of David is Jesus. It's about him that Zechariah is singing. He announces the visit of God. God's visit of his people is a moment of great joy. We may remember here the story of Naomi the Israelite who had gone to Moab and later returned to the promised land as she heard that the Lord had visited his people. This is Ruth chapter 1 verse 6. Zechariah in his hymn will again refer to the visitation of God in a very beautiful manner. He tells of the duty that his newborn son will undertake. He will make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sins. The loving kindness of the heart of our God who visits us like the dawn from on high. Luke chapter 1 
verses 77 and 78. The dawn from on high brings the warmth of the new day and takes out darkness. Christmas sheds warmth in our cold lives and sheds new light into our very being. And all who encounter us should feel this warmth and the light of life. Indeed, Christmas is the story of the Son of God visiting his people. Later, during the public ministry of Jesus, as he raised the son of the widow of the city of Nain, the people glorified God saying, God has visited his people. This is Luke chapter 7 verse 16. As God visits his people, he brings hope, peace, joy and love. We may here recall that there is a practice of lighting four candles in the four Sundays of Advent, representing hope, peace, joy and love. I think that in this year in which we are celebrating Christmas, at very difficult times, these virtues are more than significant. In fact, Jesus, the one born, is our hope. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his message for the World Day of Peace on 1st January 2023, speaks of the difficult days that we are passing through presently. He says, at the very moment when we dare to hope that the darkest hours of the COVID-19 pandemic were over, a terrible new disaster befell humanity. We witnessed the onslaught of another scourge, another war to some extent like that of the COVID-19, but driven by culpable human decisions. The war in Ukraine is reaping innocent victims and spreading insecurity, not only among those directly affected, but in a widespread and indiscriminate way for everyone. Also for those who, even thousands of kilometers away, suffer its collateral effects. We need but think of grain shortages and fuel prices. The Pope says further, while a vaccine has been found for COVID-19, suitable solutions have not yet been found for the war. Certainly, the virus of war is more difficult to overcome than the viruses that compromise our bodies because it comes not from outside of us but from within the human heart corrupted by sin. See the Gospel of Mark chapter 7 verses 17 to 23. We hope that the birth of the Son of God will change the hearts of men and women for He is our hope and He it is who can take away the corruption of sin and bring real peace. While the angels sang at his birth, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors, St. Paul, writing to the Ephesians, affirmed, He is our peace. The Pope, in his above message, tells further as regards peacemaking, for we need to transform our customary criteria for viewing the world around us. We can no longer think exclusively of carving out space for our personal or national interest. Instead, we must think in terms of the common good, recognizing that we belong to a greater community and opening our minds and hearts to universal human fraternity. The birth of Jesus is a matter of great joy. As we saw above in the text of Isaiah and as the angel announced to the shepherds, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Tew is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. In fact, for Christians, the joy of living is not just one emotion among many, but it has its own deep theological roots. In our hearts, there is joy as there is illumination from above. Mary and Joseph were the first to welcome the Lord Jesus, but the circumstances of that birth must have disturbed them. This is the story of the marginalized ones. On their journey, they have nothing with them needed for a newborn child, yet they consent to leave the mystery of God's will in a situation which does not relieve them of any of the commitments 
and responsibilities of daily life. They are poor parents, like many, struggling with problems that make them similar to many other parents in the world. But they are listening people, accepting God's plan that enters their life and turns it upside down. It's the mystery of God that enters their lives that keeps them joyful. Finally, Christmas is the feast of love. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran pastor, martyred to Nazism, enlightens us in this regard. He tells what Christmas is like in his homily on the third Sunday of Advent. He says, God is not ashamed of man's baseness. He enters into it. God loves that which is lost, that which is not considered the insignificant, that which is marginalized, weak and afflicted. Where men say lost, there he says saved. In Christmas, God is close to us as never before. There he wants to break into our lives. There he makes us feel his approach so that we understand the miracle of his love of his closeness and of his grace. Dear friends, Christmas is a story of the visit of God which transforms our lives so that all who visit us in turn will feel the warmth and light of God. He gives us hope, peace, joy and love. May these virtues fill our hearts at this Christmas as we will also become bearers of these in our daily lives. Once again, Merry Christmas to all of you.